but we were not present at March 12th and December 19th. Can yeah. Any can ask they, they, can, they can split them up. They can divide the question. Yeah, that's what he wants to separate. Yeah. So, um, if that's the case, is there a, is there a motion to divide the question? So, so motion made by Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Martinez, to divide the question, second by Councilor Justice Anasal Torres. And just, just real quick, um, is Kevisa online? Yes. So she needs to clarify her yeah, motion. Your motion is to her motion is to divide the question, and she needs to. I think we'll divide the question into the two where the new members were not present, and then the one where the new members were present. Is that solid, Peter? Yeah. And I'm okay with that. Second. Thank you, sir. There's a motion and a second on the floor to divide the question by Mayor Pro Tem. Pegasus Martinez, second by Council Justice on San Torres. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Division and the only question I got, Mayor, is uh, are there any me uh, meeting minutes that were lacking? Because I see December 19th and then March 12th. Is there anything in between that we're missing? Any other minutes that have not come to board for approval? Ms. Garcia, I'll be here. December was was is kind of an outlier because we couldn't find the recording. So that one was done when, and the minutes in between have been done. The one that's missing at, is after March 12th. And then a February meeting where we also couldn't find the recording though, because it's done and turned in, but it didn't make it onto the agenda. Well, thank you. But other than those two meetings, those are the only outstanding meetings, yes. correct, Ms. Garcia, Ms. Martin? <coughs> So there's a motion to divide the question here uh, between A and B, correct? A, A, B together and C okay. alone. Right, so adoption of the minutes for December 19, 2023 and the March 12, 2024 meeting minutes. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Mayor Puerto Vegas and Martinez. This is Ray, is he correct? Yes. In favor. Motion to second. Second by Council Justice Anasa Torres. Uh, the three new councilors would just refuse, or not refuse, would yeah, just uh, abstain. So they would answer that. Yeah. 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 Ye
Uh, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Same sign. Is there any abstentions on it? There'll be no. Public comment. Public comment is limited to two minutes this evening. Uh, you need to sign in with the city clerk beforehand. Ms. Garcia. Bethany Bradley. Now it's on. I think these people should redo their whole comments all over because the mic was turned off. Because it's very rude. Well, anyways, you three new council members know who I am by now. 
I hold everybody accountable. I tell you how it is. If you don't like it, you shouldn't be sitting there. First thing and foremost, remember why you're there and who votes you to put you on those seats. You ain't getting no votes, Pedro, but you, you got there. But you're so, you're so good for that. Um, John, what's going on at Hemis, buddy? You have no power at Hemis, huh? Trying to threaten litigation at Hemis is pretty upsetting, buddy. Did you, did you hire, did you hire Eric? Because what Eric's past is at Santa Fe County, that's your personnel file, buddy. And it's not looking good. It's not looking good at all. The complaints that you have, point of order, don't engage me. Do not engage me. Because that's a violation of the Open Meetings Act. You guys don't like to follow the rules or anything like that, which is understandable. Charles Rene, you say that I'm bluffing on litigation with the city. We'll see how that goes, buddy. We'll show you who's laughing at the end. With that being said, you can laugh. John, you can laugh, bro. You can laugh. You're looking at on YouTube. <coughs> you're on YouTube there. Everybody's seeing you smirk, bro. Everybody's seeing you smirk. But what you're doing at MS is pretty exciting, bro. Thought you grew up by now. You're so a little kid.
We need to have a light audit throughout the city uh, in the evening uh, to drive through every single street that we own, uh, every single light pole that we own, because there's several lights that are out. I have, and I need to send, I'll send this to you, uh, CM, but I have a bunch of light pole numbers. I take pictures of every, the numbers that are on each light pole that we need to get on and turned on. Uh, and then I just want to give kudos to Jeff Sargent and them for Valdez Park. I don't know if y'all have passed by, but that park is lit up now at night. It's fierce, it's nice. You know, nobody's parked there at night, nobody's, uh, nobody's doing the, the bad stuff. Um, and then also we need to do, and unfortunately uh, Bethany brought this up, but we need to do a shopping cart uh, daily drive through uh, through the city. Uh, because on uh, North McCurdy, uh, I don't know how many times I've called, but there's a brand new shopping cart there all the time. Um, I'd like to, I'd like to publicly state that uh, I want to work on an ordinance regarding shopping carts, a sponsored ordinance regarding shopping carts, and the businesses uh, hoping that we can at least put some sort of regulation on them. You know, you see businesses that put these uh, magnetic magnetic stops on, on the wheels or something. So these cards can't be taken out. So uh, I'll be working with Mr. Rennick and, and so forth to uh, respond to an ordinance to get that done at least to mitigate somewhat of the trash that's uh, that's being thrown around the city. Uh, other than that, uh, welcome to our new councilors. I look forward to working with you guys. Thank you. Council, you do. Mayor and fellow councilors, I think that. Uh, what I heard today about how there was recordings of these meetings used to help draft the minutes, I think it would be useful for transparency purposes if we could find a way to archive those files on the agenda and meetings uh, website. And that may help with some of the trust issues that some may have about some of the meetings not being broadcasted online, since we're currently still looking and trying to figure out a way to do that. I also, wanted to second um, Councilor Salazar Flores' comments about the, uh, the shopping carts. Maria's granddaughter was a volunteer on my campaign, and I visited their house, and I have to say, there is at least 100 shopping carts in that, in that, that, that trailer park there. And some of the security measures that the, 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 that the businesses are taking are being implemented. You can see the uh, hard uh, bar for some of the dollar stores still attached to some of those carts, so they're still getting them out, even with this additional security measures taken. There's just a crime issue in the city, and we need to start stepping it up. Councilor Nanette, what's your guess? Councilor Salazar, Torres, a follow up on your question. Um, the MOU did come before the Community Services uh, Committee. Was approved to come before full council. I'll follow up with Ashley to see why it hasn't been placed on the agenda. Um, and we couldn't, we couldn't put anything on this agenda. Okay. So it'll be on the next agenda? Yeah. Yes. We okay. had other things to. Well, thank you, Council. Yeah, we have to recommend I also want to thank our, or welcome the councilors, the new councilors, and those that have been with us in the past. It's good to be sitting next to you. Welcome. Congratulations on your election. This is Pro Tem. Thank you. Too. Um, I also would like to consider working on an ordinance uh, for food, food trucks in our city. Um, I think they're everywhere. I'm concerned about uh, coming through Espanola. It kind of looks like little lies because we don't have any control of how they set up. So I'll be working on that. So then I think we are just going to mention we have a good meeting with the uh, city of Espanola, uh, Rio River County, and Santa Fe County regarding legalizing the town. And just see if we can bring work down to the, to the valley, the entire valley actually, and just some other topics of that. I think I'll just kind of turn into that. I also <coughs> wanted to mention that I had a really good meeting mm -hmm. a week or two ago with uh, actually Cynthia's boss and her entire team on some partnerships for some really good projects uh, in, in our community uh, and in Santa Fe County just agree as well. But mainly uh, projects involving children uh, of every age. So hopefully we'll be moving some of those initiatives forward. Uh, 
counselors were sort of cheated out of an opportunity to be sworn in properly because of COVID and all of that that happened. Uh, they actually got sworn in on the fly and that's the way it was and it was no big deal. There was no way here. The families didn't get to see it. It was just it was awful. So I think it's something that you should be very proud of and I think you should be proud to serve. And I thank you for starting them off on the right foot. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. I think I've got a lot of questions for you because I, you know, I saw the thing on, online, you know, about community service. So I'm excited to <coughs> potentially be on that committee, depending on what everybody decides here. Um, but I have a question regarding the summer lunch program. Is the city at all? Are we doing that at all? You know, for example, like in Pajarito and the low income because I'm a product of the summer lunch program. Uh, so I want to see if uh, I used to work here too. I, I ate there and then worked it. and then became a site supervisor at the age of 14. But any of those, uh, want to see if we're doing anything like that uh, for the summer lunch program, you know, being that we're April already, summer's approaching quickly, and see what we're doing for our uh, littles out there. When it comes to enforcement of uh, code enforcement of the littering, I think one thing that we need to ask ourselves as well is how much the littering ordinances are being enforced. Before we impose a lot of um, code enforcement on property owners, the city needs to pick up its slack and start enforcing littering laws and littering ordinances mm -hmm. and start trying to put these people in the municipal court and slash them on trials because we're asking these property owners to pick up the slack for the lack of Each district has 
uh, two men or two women. It's, it's really inc incredible for the history of our valley. We're excited about that. Um, and uh, I, I don't have anything else. We didn't put on here manager report, but uh, <coughs> briefly, do you want to don't go into depth because that'd be a violation of the law? But do you want to just do a little brief overhead of some of the questions that were asked? Uh, I, I think I have to uh, counsel for this is, is, is the baseball field and the lighting. I've got to keep the case today. I've got a phone call from the counselor, Archie Lithuania, this morning, and, and I addressed it right away. They, they got on it and it blew up. Um, as far as the lunch program, the counselor told us that there's also a, I'm not sure what location it's going to be at. We are doing it. The lunch program is in. I haven't met with Ashley. <coughs> I haven't been briefed too much by Jeremy. He's been taking a lot of time off. Of, He's leaving us in the next week, so last week, so and he hasn't briefed me on much of it. Ashley, I asked his face that she is having some of the program, the lunch program, so that will be a fact that I'll find out where it comes from. And other than that, Mary, we have seen. You know, to address some of the concerns about the homeless group, we in house, we will address it. I have my city staff as on those uh, in house with the homeless group, and we'll address that when we get to the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To address them, we've identified the areas we're looking at, and we'll meet again this week. Um, so that we have to put the program together and, and work with them to where we're going to go. We've had several meetings with public schools, and um, the best concerns are. So, because um, one of the locations is right across from the middle school, so we, we are looking at that. That I know that the uh, Deputy Chief Wickersham and I have been looking at that a lot, Pablo McCoy and the Fire Marshal, um, to address those, the need for the, the, the homeless encampment. And, and um, I know it's growing. Um, we've got it under control. We're, we just continue to get waivers from them. And so we're able to track them, who's there, who's in our camp. It also helps with the law enforcement <coughs> aspect of it as well. But, um, you know, we're looking at a lot of different avenues, and I know I've got a time frame to meet, and I, I kept you in the loop on a daily basis. Mary, you counsel going to do this, you counsel for the and counsel to call me. Um, but we are looking at, at what we're going to do because we have to do something. And I know it's in the time frame that I need to do, too, but it's as a problem everywhere. And we just have to be careful how we move forward with it. And how uh, we treat them. They are communities that fall out in the areas of criminal elements. That's the state of what's been going on there. Um, Chief Garcia picked up the border, broke into the, um, the uh, our wastewater treatment facility three times it was burglarized. And he asked the DA for a warrant. The warrant was not issued until finally he broke into Cook's. Uh, asphalt plant and destroyed it, caused a lot of damage, and he was not picked up in our academy, he was picked up at Catholics. Um, and the chief can allude to that. Um, so it's, it's, it's a, a tough situation, but we'll get through it. And we look to other communities like Santa Fe, Las Vegas, communities similar to our size to where we could also look at what they're doing to try. But uh, Mayor, honestly, the people from those smaller communities are looking to us as to what Espanola is going to do in the future of the homeless. And so we can kind of take the lead on this and we can be the example of the support in, in a lot of small areas in the state of New Mexico. Um, other than that, Mayor, uh, the budget process will start. I'd like to start the study sessions with the uh, Board of Finances, the entire council. Uh, the chairman, uh, if, if the votes go right, Chairman to be about this, the Finance Committee. I met with him uh, on several occasions already to, just to go over the budget with uh, my finance director, Ms. Moya. And, um, you know, I'm going to take direction from this council as to how they see fit as we go through the budget process and begin with the study session so that everyone is in the loop and has to say is how we we're using the taxpayer money, how we reflect our departments, how we look at um, the services that we need to provide to the citizens of Spanola. And so um, I look forward to that starting soon. Uh, and down there, I, 
Councilor Felicia, I'm just, before we moved on, Councilor Felicia, um, you mentioned that you were going to be here Thank you. Uh, and actually, uh, city CM, if you can, uh, our trash trucks are there. I uh, think they should be so they're there here, but they're not. They're requiring us to send our mechanics to Phoenix, to Phoenix Arizona to train them on how to make data. And um, they don't want both their mechanics. And when I talk to Daniel Frescas, who is a superintendent of that division, um, how he wants to divide his mechanics up to send them to train them on how to work on this. They're in Albuquerque as well, but Follow up to that. I guess I'm a bit confused about what I state for training, but our trucks are in Albuquerque. That's where their training facility is. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's based on their schedules, and I can't have two mechanics out there. I want both of them out at the same time. I, I want to get this trust here. Is it feasible to send one of the guys? And I'm going to send them the diesel kind of thing. This is the organizational meeting of the city council by state statute and by city ordinance. The city council needs to reorganize and after two years, after the election, immediately it's the first the second Tuesday if you're getting after the election. Um, the four appointed positions are the city manager, the police chief, the fire chief, and the city clerk. Yeah, those before you on the agenda. The ordinance uh, indicates that the attorney is a contracted attorney that's handled in-house, so that's not an appointed position because that's not a staff position, it's a contractor. Um, so this meeting, we cannot have any other business other than to handle the organization of this body going forward. And I want to thank uh, all of you for coming together tonight. This is a very important meeting for the direction of the city of Escanola. Items proposed for council consideration, discussion items, and action items. First off is election of Mayor Pro Tem. The Mayor Pro Tem serves in the absence, in my absence, uh, assisting at chairing these meetings. If I'm unable to attend, also assisting at public events and such, and operating as an extension of the mayor's office that I'm unable to attend. It's typically uh, someone that has the ability and the time to do. So at this time, uh, oh, so I'm going to roll out rules of debate, uh, rules of, of this. I'm going to open up the floor for nominations. You do not need a nomination to be seconded. You just need one person to make the nomination. At that point, then, the council will make the motion to cease nominations and elect, or they may elect by acclamation. So at this time, I'm going to open up the floor for the election of Mayor Pro Tem. Councilor Aaron Salasak. I'd like to make the motion uh, to elect uh, Councilor uh, Peggy Sue Martinez as, as Mayor Pro Tem. Okay. Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, forgive me, Councilor Peggy Sue Martinez, do you accept that nomination? Mayor, as you know, uh, my life has changed drastically over the last year with the addition of, of, the, of the new grandchild. I'm totally and completely committed to the city of Hawaii. I really feel like uh, Things have worked out very well between you and I, where the mayor and the mayor took the position. I've been concerned because I'm able to say things when you haven't been able to, and it's, it's worked out fine. So, with that said, I'm honored to accept the nomination. Is there any other nominee? Councilor Sutton. Councilor, they do have I would like to uh, motion to nominate Councilor Justin G. Salazar Torres. Councillor Salazar, 
there. Just a question I see you on the agenda we have a session. Uh, you obviously limited personnel matters to the manager, police chief, fire chief, et cetera. Et cetera. Um, would it be wise, because I know some of us have questions and I know we'd like to keep things in mind. Is there anything that the council, we may We may decide that. Is there any reason the council would like to enter into executive session? And we can enter into executive session at any point to discuss any of the positions. We don't have to just go in specifically uh, to talk about city manager. We could talk about police chief, fire chief, and city. And at any juncture, then we can talk. That's the pleasure of the government. Sounds like that. Uh, Council would do that. <clears throat> under discussion, under discussion, I think that uh, the way that this process was handled by uh, having the previous council vote um, on a recommendation prior to this organizational meeting was wrong. And I think that it communicated a message that was meant to be a chilling effect. And one thing that concerns me about this administration is the politicization of the city manager's office. I know that the city manager has the votes to move forward, and I would recommend that in the future, we try to separate the mayor and the, and the management position, try to get some distance between the two offices, because I think as a manager, we should push back on that resolution and said, we should just wait for the new council, it's only two weeks. So I think that, you're doing a pretty good job given everything going on, but I cannot vote for the nomination because of that resolution. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else have it? How's there going to be this? Oh, thank you, Mayor. I uh, also want to just talk a little bit about city manager and his accomplishments. And I do think that he's uh, on the road being a short amount of time that he's been here in uh, and had a bit of, of what's come his way. My biggest concerns, of course, are that Voice those two things. We've already had a conversation about those, but I just wanted to, to let everyone know that those are not in the Councilor Justin says that. Thank you, Mayor, for indulging me on. And I guess I just have a question because right after this, we have resolution 2024-10, approving compensation for city manager. My question is, wasn't this already voted on before this? No. I, we, we adopted the contract. But by ordinance, set chapter 78-8 of the city requires that the ordinance the resolution of the governing body shall fix the pay. Okay. Just involve me for a minute. So we approved the contract, but now we... Okay. The contract also says in there, too, that the there has to be a resolution of the governing body because the contract obviously can't trump city ordinance. City ordinance specifically states that the salary shall be set by resolution of the government. Understood. I just feel like we're kind of doing double work. It feels like double work. But uh, all right, thank you. Uh, uh, Councilor Valdez. Um, Mayor, I think uh, in this situation, in this uh, positions, it's one of the things that the uh, mayor should uh, appoint. I just got a text that said the lights on Chase Park and they sent me a picture of it. Um, came in at the right time. Uh, things I have to say against. Okay. 
Andrew about this? Yes. Did he see Benavides? Mm. Alicia Archuleta Toya? In favor. Aaron J. Salazar? In favor. Minetti Rodriguez? Six to square vote of six to two. Congratulations, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. So, we we went and tried to go back, and we couldn't find where we weren't sure. There hasn't been anyone that's been reappointed at the council meeting, so we're just going to have you sworn in again and execute a new oath of office. And, Thank you, Judge Alexandra Naranjo, for being here. We're really grateful for being here this evening. So, Mr. Duhan will take the oath of office once more. Yes. Do you have the Bible in the semester? Do you have an oath? Oh. Can we hear the call in that Congratulations, Mr. Duhon, on your reappointment as city manager for the city of Espanol. We've had a busy 
crazy six months and you proved yourself to the governing body. And thank you for that. We look forward to your continued work with the governing body to work on behalf of the city of Escanola and work and handle day to day affairs here at the city. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Do you have anything to say? Um, the whole family couldn't be the night. They took my granddaughter to the zoo that they were done. To my better half, uh, everyone knows her, Shorty, Nicole, <laughs> and my dad. Toby's with you, Mayor, and the counselor, the junior counselor. So I'm a son counselor, uh, Rodriguez, and I put him on his own guest cider. And of course, Councilor Valdez, who, whose wife, uh, he, she did our genealogy. And uh, it turns out that uh, Councilor Valdez's wife was an issue with my grandma, who was on my penis, but I found it. So, um, it's an honor, Mayor, uh, Councilors, uh, to serve this community. And as I always tell my directors and, and the chiefs on uh, my Monday meetings, is we work for the people of Espanola. We serve the people of Espanola. So we'll continue to do our due diligence. We'll continue to serve the people, work in their best interest. And uh, just thank you for being here, Councilors. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Moving on, uh, in compliance with Chapter 78 of the Municipal Code, uh, before you have Resolution 24-10, approving compensation for city managers. A resolution approving compensation for city manager in the amount of $108,000 per year. You have it before you. So, motion made by Mayor Pro Tem Peggy Sue Martinez, second by Councilor Felicia Archer Is there any discussion? And being none, Ms. Garcia, would you please call the roll? Yeah, there was a motion made by Mayor Pro Tem Peggy Sue Martinez, second by Councilor Felicia Archibald. Mayor Pro Tem Peggy Sue Martinez. Thank you. Councilors Samuel Ledoux. Yes. Justin Salazar Flores. In favor. Pedro Valdez. Yes. Denise D. Benavides. Alicia Archuleta Toya. In favor. Aaron J. Valdez. In favor. Salazar, sorry. <laughs> Manette D. Rodriguez. <laughs> Second time. <coughs> Ocean carries. Seven, four, and one against. Thank you. Um, at this time, I, I'd like to move Fire Chief to before Police Chief because Chief Johnny Martinez has his grandson here in the and uh, his grandson, and so I wanted us to just do that. If you don't mind, Chief Garcia. Um, so I wanted to bring forth the appointment of Chief Johnny Martinez. Uh, Johnny is the most senior member, Chief Martinez, of the fire department. He's been with the department 18 years now, I believe. 18 years. Uh, before that, he had a long career with the Awasana Fire Department as his volunteer fire chief. He's the one who actually built the station with the Evan Hernandez. Um, many of us know him as Johnny Ford from his time at Hunter Ford as the manager down there. I mean, this guy has quite so many seal hunter stories to share with all of us. And the stories of, of downtown on Main Street. He remembers my grandpa when he'd get out of the house and he'd be in a scooter trying to get to the orchard. My grandma's running after him down Guanyate. Uh, but uh, I'm bringing forward Chief Johnny Martinez for reappointment as fire chief. I'm Motion to approve. Motion made by Councilor Justice Alcatores, second by Councilor Nguyen Rodriguez. Is there any discussion? Councilor Ledu. For discussion, I would like to say that Espanola has probably one of the best fire departments in the entire oh, yeah. country. Yeah. 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 Chief Johnny Martinez has been here since April 1st, 2022. Uh, we need continuity in the department, and he has brought that to the table. Uh, Councilor Justice, I suppose. Not only is Chief Johnny a good uh, fire chief, he's also a good uh, assistant coach for T-Ball. <laughs> 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 
of the state of New Mexico and the ordinances of the city of Española. And I will, to the maximum of my capacity, defend, support, and pledge my loyalty to the citizens of Española and faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of said office to the best of my ability. So help me God. Good evening, Mayor John Lebon, distinguished councillors, guests, and community members. First and foremost, I thank my God in favor of his grace, mercy, and blessings. It has been a pleasure working with your fire chief for the last two years and appreciate your support and assistance in making sure our fire department meets its goals and ensures the success of our operation, operational needs. Thank you, Mayor John Lebon, Mayor Pro Tem, councillors, city directors, and staff. I want to express my sincere gratitude to all of to all for the success and accomplishment of the fire department by the support that you provided. There have been several accomplishments completed in the past two and a half years, and it couldn't have been done been possible without the assistance of everyone. I'm a firm believer in family, and in our and in our line of business, I have three families. My first family is you, the governing body directors, staff, and fellow colleagues. My second family is my department, a member of this Fire Department. My third family is my mom, my brother, sister, wife, my children, and grandchildren. I lost my father in 2021. And in 2022, I was appointed to this position as fire chief. I couldn't run to tell him about my appointment as fire chief and the opportunity to serve, my, to serve my community. However, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for my father, who installed good work ethics, respons responsibility, and integrity. I'm trying my best to be like my father. However, I know that I can't be half the man that he was without his maturity and wisdom. <clears throat> I am a firm believer in teamwork, and no, there is no I in team. Our department is one is our department is dependent on one another and cannot and will not function if everyone decided to design. Our team relies on each other when we are at work, responding to to a scene for ensuring the safety for, of our staff. To this I am grateful that my staff understands this and functions as a team. As the fire chief there has to be a level of trust in the line of service that is provided to this city and community, and it takes the team to ensure the safety of everyone involved. I would like to take the opportunity to thank my wife. She wasn't able to make it today because we had a, she had a family emergency. Who has put up with me for 36 years. <laughs> she has the best in what I do. She's, she has seen the best in what I do and has certainly seen the worst of me. I thank her for her constant, constant love and support and hope to see her, to see what the next 36 years has in store for us. I also want to thank my mom for her love and support and for teaching the community of teamwork 
and showing no top of respect to the one another. To my brother, sisters, and daughters, thank you for always being there by my side, having my back, and showing me the true meaning of what family is. In closing, I'd like to share with the community of Española, the Española Fire, Fire Department, and myself as their fire chief, that we have your best interests at heart, and we do our best to serve and protect in your time of need. And please know that our community is first and foremost our priorities. Thank you. We look forward to the continued leadership of the fire department, Chief Martinez, and thank you for all you do along with DC Wickersham. And uh, we have the, one of the greatest fire departments in the state. Uh, we're making great strides there, and I look forward to the continued leadership under under you and, and DC Wickersham at the fire department. So thank you. Moving on, uh, for appointment of police chief this evening, um, I'm bringing the reappointment of Chief Mizell Garcia. Motion to approve. Oh, hold on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long pause. <laughs> Chief Garcia um, <clears throat> is, is uh, when I took office as mayor, I, um, I had a few people I wanted to talk to. And, um, you know, I was, uh, I've known Chief Garcia's family for many years. Mm -hmm. He grew up here on the west side of Espanola. His mom used to sell suits to my grandpa, and uh, he used to always tease Nancy because of how short she was. And, um, you know, when I became mayor, I was debating who I was going to put as chief of police. And so I, uh, I reached out to Chief Garcia, and uh, he actually had been recently a finalist for chief of police in Santa Fe. And he had called me to see if I had any stroke up there in Santa Fe, and that was in December 2021. I told him no, I says, but I think the city of Espanola would be blessed to have you one day in Espanola. And uh, I hadn't decided at that point if I was going to run for mayor. And, um, you know, I've, I've known Mazelle and his family for many years. And so when I called Chief Garcia about coming home, he had just, he was still actually, I think, on retirement from Albuquerque Police Department. He had just retired after a 27 year career with the Albuquerque Police Department as a commander. That's essentially a deputy police chief, folks. That's the state's largest police department, 600 uniformed officers. There was a lot of special investigations. Chief Garcia was excited to come back to his hometown. He hadn't been back home in 40 years, but he's actually a classmate to Councilor Benavides, Councilor Rodriguez, um, and he's just a year behind uh, on view. Uh, but uh, Chief Garcia, I witnessed in the last two years his commitment to this community. He grieves this community. He wants better for this community because he knows and he grew up here. Um, he has a good working relationship with the public. And so I'm bringing more of his name tonight for reappointment as chief of police because I believe the police department has made some strides, have a long way to go, but I believe continuity has been the best thing. So uh, where's our motion by Councilor Justice Salazar Florida? Second by Councilor Aaron Salazar. Is there any further discussion? Uh, uh, for discussion, I just want to say I'm going to support the chief, uh, but I want to highlight that there is a major crime crisis in the city, and the opioid epidemic has caused major damage to every aspect of our life in the city. We need to step up enforcement. Uh, whatever you need, you need to tell us, and we need to get it done because. So many lives are being ruined every single day in the city. We need to step it up. Thank you. Uh, I, I do believe that uh, there is an opioid epidemic that the city is definitely suffering from, along with every other city in this nation. Uh, I really believe that working on uh, some type of walk-in detox center is very necessary in our community and I'll continue to advocate that for a very long time. 
uh, I did run some numbers today concerning the crime in this community. In 2023, from January to April, there were 4,514 calls. In 2024, there has been 3,841 calls. That's a drop of 14% in the same time period. So I thank you, uh, Chief, for you and your staff for the job that you're doing. Uh, recently, the state police officer that was killed in Tupac Carey was a very close friend of my family. And it just brings me to understanding at a deeper level at the sacrifice and the risk that every officer takes every day when they go to work. Um, you guys have nothing but respect coming from me for the job that you do. You're dealing with society's worst issues on a daily basis, day in and day out. Uh, as as uh, the CM mentioned, uh, it's frustrating at times when we don't have a DA or the, or the DA does not sign off on warrants when, we, when we're requesting them from our community. It's very important that we do support the department financially in any other way that we can to make sure that this community is as safe as possible. I thank you and your staff for the work you're doing. You're doing a good job. Appreciate you. Thank you, Mayor. I do want to echo those sentiments. I know that uh, it, this is a tough place to work, right? And, and when Mayor first brought your name up, he said, well, I was ecstatic because I've known you my entire life, right? And your entire family. And I felt like you were the person for the job. Um, has it been perfect? Well, no. But you know what? I still know it's not perfect, so I believe you need a chief who maybe isn't as perfect as maybe somebody else would like you to be. I believe we've made strides. I mean, the number of calls that you guys handle, <coughs> short-staffed as you've been at times, uh, not just you guys, of course, fire, we always back on fire, but I mean, I, I think, Chief, that we've done a tremendous job, to be honest with you, and is there a lot more work to be done? Absolutely. Uh, we have a Chief that I have never once texted you or called you that you have not immediately responded or responded and said, I'm in a meeting, may I get back to you, ma'am? And I said, absolutely. I said, don't call me now. <laughs> 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 but extremely responsive. We've got a lot of respect. I agree with Mayor Potion that we need to figure out how we can get more funding over to public safety because it's extremely important for us to be able to fund what we need. Thank you, Chief. I appreciate you. Councilman Annette, would you please? Chief Garcia? You've done a commendable job. Thank you uh, for serving our community. And additionally, for creating partnerships with all of the organizations within our community, the provider community. Um, you're such an advocate in all facets, and I admire you for that. Thank you. No further discussion. Ms. Garcia, would you please call the roll? Mayor Pro Tem Peggy Sue Martinez, in favor. Councilors Justin Salazar Pobres, in favor. Pedro Valdez, yes. Samuel Ledoux, in favor. Denise D. Benavides, in favor. Aaron J. Salazar, in favor. Alicia Archuleta Toya, in favor. Nanette D. Rodriguez, absolutely in favor. Unanimous.
and the ordinances of the city of Española. And I will, to the maximum of my capacity, defend, support, and pledge my loyalty to the citizens of Española, Española excuse me, and faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of said office to the best of my ability. So help me God. Congratulations. You're right, Senator, uh, Councilor Duke, we do have an issue, and we do need to address it. 
but we have issues sometimes with um, agencies not wanting to work with us, and those are the bridges that we need to build. We're not even a part of Haida. We're not even a part, and we need to build those bridges. But I can tell you this, the two years I've been here, I've seen the changes, and I, and I love being challenged. Um, I look forward to the new members of my, our public safety committee, because one thing you'll find from me is I'm extremely honest. If you ask me a question, sometimes I'm, I'm too honest. My wife says that. Um, she never asked me how do I look in these pants because I'm going to say this. And I can tell you, she hasn't gained more than 10 pounds since she's been married. She still weighs 110 But I look forward to these next two years and I can guarantee you this. I'm not dissuaded. Um, I understand criticism my whole career. Right? Police were criticized. I understand that and we need to be. Um, we've changed our policies. We've changed SOPs. Um, if you ask any one of my officers, what are the chief two pet peeves? First one are pursuits, right? I hate pursuits because um, I know how much they cost our community. I know the value. And I think the mayor brought it up before that we've only had two, I mean, those type of lawsuits. And I think that's enforcement. I mean, that's one of the biggest things. And the other thing is not turning in your reports, which when I took over, we had over 300, and our officers didn't want that now. We have maybe four or five a week because we're dealing with it. But I appreciate all of you giving me the chance. Those of you that have been here the full two years, I look forward to working with the three new ones. Um, my phone is always on. My, my wife understands I answer my phone 24 7 my work phone. That's my third pet peeve. Answer your phone, especially if you're in a position uh, when I can ask that. But I look forward to anything I can do with all of you. Um, anything I can do to help your districts, please um, give me a call. I mean, you all, I'm always there. Text me or call me, and we'll be there, and we'll do the best we can for the, like you all, the city of Española, and it's our community. I live here. I believe in that. And, and like the mayor said, I grew up here. My mom and dad, you know, were from here. So I have a vested interest in this community. And I appreciate the, the faith and the support that you all have showed me this evening. Thank you so much. Martinez and Chief Garcia, they've been here again since April 1st, 2022. Um, and I think the continuity for the police and fire departments is so important. And that's important in implementing procedures and policies for both your departments, doing projects, and ensuring follow, ensuring follow through. And that's one of the things that uh, from day one I wanted to have is, is a team of individuals that were going to be able to stick it out and handle it because I think the staff deserves some continuity. So thank you, Chief Garcia and Chief Martinez. <laughs> Next, before you, you have the ratification of appointment of city clerk. The city clerk is the only position in the state of New Mexico that is required in every municipality. Um, it's supervised by the mayor, even in a mayor, even in a mayor, city manager form of government, the clerk is overseen by the mayor. I uh, I want to regret to inform everybody that Ms. Garcia has decided to step down from her position as city clerk. She's going to be needing to focus more time on her mother, uh, who many of us know, Ms. Dora Garcia, a blessing to our valley and our community. Um, Ms. Garcia is just a wonderful addition to the team here at City Hall because of her personality. There isn't a person that Debbie doesn't know in this town. Uh, Debbie knows so many people, and she's 1987 Fiesta Queen. She's done so much for this valley in community activities and entities. She's a lifelong resident of this valley. Um, and you know, I, I really want to commend is, is the executive team that we have with the manager, the two chiefs, and the clerk. They all gel pretty well together, and I like to joke with them. They're all the little West Siders because they're from the West Side. Eric B. Not have grown up on the West Side, but he knows all the West Side stories through his dad. Um, and so we've had a great gelling working team. Ms. Garcia has been with me since August 2022 and she's been serving the city in that capacity and we want to respect her decision to spend more time with her mom. We're grateful for the commitment and sacrifice that she's put towards the city. She's here very many late hours. 
She comes in on the weekends. City Park is a very task, uh, big task job. I want everyone to realize and understand that the City Clerk's Department has had, even going back, you were last here on Council of this, um, completely started from ground zero on, on April 1st, 2022. There was nobody in the department in April 1st, 2022. Um, we had an interim in there that worked formerly in the county clerk's office and he did a great <coughs> job. Ms. Garcia joined us in August of 2022. Uh, but going back to 2013, I think, was the last time that someone came in a city clerk that had not been, uh, that had not been in the clerk's office whatsoever. So she has had a learning curve, and I really want to appreciate her for all the commitment and dedication she put forward to ensuring the job was carried out. We don't have any lawsuits contrary to what individuals have indicated. Uh, thank you, Ms. Garcia. A lot of that is attributed to your training that you put forward. And we're grateful for that and the sacrifice that you've done. And we respect your decision, and we wish you well in your future pursuits. Ms. Garcia's last day will be at the end of the week this week. But I just wanted to thank Ms. Garcia and I want to encourage the governing body to take this time to recognize Ms. Garcia for the sacrifice and commitment she's done for the city of Esper. It's no secret um, that Ms. Garcia and I have been friends um, all of our lives. I, I admire you for your dedication in this position that you knew absolutely nothing about. Your commitment to being here every day and the high learning curve that was before you. You've made strides. There's no reason to hang your head. You hold it up high because you did an incredible job. Thank you. And I just think that I also want to say that as a community, we need to learn or mentor being kind and compassionate to people even when we don't see eye to eye. Amen. And I think that needs to happen on this governing body as well. I've seen a lot of things that make me question my sitting up here for the last two years. We have a lot of work to do. And if we cannot be kind and honest, with each other, we're not going to get anywhere. Ms. Garcia, thank you for your commitment to this community. Thank you for all the years of our friendship, and I love you too. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Ms. Garcia, since we've got to be in a little professional, sir, I know you're as dead. Uh, I just want to say thank you for, for serving in public office. It, it's rough. Yeah. And I know at times that, uh, you know, we've spoken, and it's just been like, ay, por que, what the heck's going on? But I do want to apologize, too, though, that it's been a rough two years. And I feel that as a governing body, you know, we could have given you more resource, given you more support, helped you just a little bit more. I do apologize for, for those hurdles that you've had to cross from time to time. Um, it did go unnoticed, and I, I do apologize for not speaking up just a little bit more. 
Thank you. Appreciate you. Give your mom a best of for me. Because she gives the biggest wet kisses ever. <laughs> 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 How's the Benny Venus? Thank you, Mary. Well, yes, I'm You know, I don't have a rough start in politics, I wish I was black. <laughs> and I also hear here at Comfort or King is that, you know, if we're going to get anything done in our community, we have to start first by supporting each other, right, and getting a lot done. And I think that we can get a lot done in our community. We have to support each other. And I think that you put your best foot forward. I think you did the best job that you absolutely sure. could. And I think that resources, absolutely, I believe, could have been better. There could have been more support. I think there's a lot of tension and pressure, but I thank you so much for everything that you did try to do and the new Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Garcia, I have to say that it's incredibly admirable for you to go and try to take care of one of your family members. I think it's one of the most underrated aspects of our society that we don't recognize folks who give up career opportunities to try to help their own family. That's a lot. And those kind of sacrifices are some of the most admirable we can see. So good luck and you know I hope for your mother as well. God bless. Thank you. I want to reiterate all the positive comments that have been made and I also want to recognize the comment that uh, Justin Torres Salazar has made concerning uh, possible lack of resources at times. Uh, th this jobs are, are taxing, to say the least. Uh, there are days when we've all questioned why we're here or what we're doing. And uh, uh, Councilman had comments concerning uh, how we treat each other is very important. I think that there has been uh, uh, less decorum recently with uh, with the public side of things coming out of this governing body. Uh, that, is, that is somewhat difficult to navigate at times. Uh, it's part of what we do. I think that uh, Ms. Garcia had more than her fair share of that. Uh, I think that there's been a lot written on, on uh, Facebook and other social media outlets concerning uh, the clerk's office that have been unfair to say the least. Uh, I want to thank you, Debbie, for the job that you've done, or uh, Ms. Garcia, I'm sorry, uh, for the job that you've done. I feel like your mother is extremely blessed to have you and you're extremely blessed to have her. And uh, anything that you can do with spending more time with her and Huge blessing with Fatsa and all of you and Council of the Dew that it's very underrated and it's very important that we do take the time to take care of our elders and we pass that on to our children so that they understand that it's very important in our own future. Uh, I want to also say that I think it's important to understand that you are an asset to this community in more ways than your capacity as city clerk. I want you to stay engaged and stay involved in this what's happening in this vanilla. And I welcome any help from you. Uh, moving on. I wish you the very best. It's not easy to be a public official, especially an appointed official, because it's just a job, but it has to be a passionate commitment. It's hard to find people for these positions, and I'm going to be very frank with you. A clerk job, and uh, a secretary job in Los Alamos probably pays more, but the city clerk position pays here. You know, back in the day, that was a very sought-after job. It was sought-after to be a police chief, sought-after to be a fire chief. We're competing with all these other entities, and um, I don't think people realize that. And then, on top of that, there's a lack of decorum and respect from, from, from individuals towards 
appointed officials, elected officials, you don't sign up for the disrespect. Uh, you also don't sign up for, for being lied to and deceived to, and I think Councilor Rodriguez really hit the nail on the head with that. Um, you know, um, you, ensuring that you have all the proper resources. You also dealt with individuals that tried to make false allegations and tried to uh, throw that and, and just throw that in the hopper and that didn't help the situation. Um, but I am hopeful that the governing body can move forward uh, with the executive staff moving forward to be more accommodating and work with people. Because whoever is going to come in as the next city clerk will need to work with the governing body. And the governing body needs to realize that there's going to be a learning curve regardless of who's in the position. And I want to make it very clear. We don't have any litigation due to the city clerk's office. There's individuals on this council that still sit here to this day that have made allegations about that to the Attorney General's office. And that's completely inappropriate. Because Ms. Garcia has done a phenomenal job with the resources she has and she's done and the trainings. She's very well respected by her peers in the Municipal Clerks Institute. I want to make that very clear. She honestly could probably be the president of that institution. She knows everybody at the Municipal Clerks Institute.